Welcome back. All right, so tonight's schedule and tomorrow night's schedule, both ones where I'm going to have to do all four reviews back to back to back to back. Uh, and then Wednesday, I shouldn't have that problem. Thursday, I'm not going to have that problem. There's only two games Thursday. Uh, Friday, I will have that problem. Saturday and Sunday, the games are spread out throughout the day. And then by the time we reach early next week, we're going to see some series probably done early. And so the, the schedule starts getting lighter. Uh, but this one rounded out the night, so that's why it's the last one I'm reviewing. Just makes sense to go chronologically. Uh, L.A. against the Edmonton, Edmonton Oilers. Is this series going to go six or seven games, or could it be over early? We'll see. Uh, so it's Talbot versus Skinner, and they wore the jerseys that they wear with the Cylon helmets. They didn't wear the Cylon helmets. What? See, I think they lost because they didn't wear the Cylon helmets personally. I think you got to wear those. You have to commit. Either you're going to wear the shiny silver and have the silver helmets, or just forget it. Uh, early four checking by the Kings. Fiala can't bury one in close. The shots were two apiece at two and a half minutes. Uh, Oilers press at three minutes. The Kings press, but they're kept to the outside. Kopitar is a net feed that's picked off. The Oilers rush. And it felt like this could be a really tight game until uh, at 6.50, Hyman buries his second attempt after a nice play by McDavid. Uh, Bouchard with the other assist at six minutes and 50 seconds. The Oilers then press for another. Byfield has a rush chance that saved. Arvidsson has a rush that's defended. And then at 9.36, Henrique makes it 2-0. Uh, he puts it top shelf from the left circle. Hyman and Bouchard with the assists. Initially, it showed McDavid with that assist, but it, it switched to Hyman. Uh, Talbot chance starting up again. So the taunting of goaltenders. Apparently, if you're a Western Canadian fan base, you're going to taunt the other team's goalie. Canucks fans did it last night against Nashville, and tonight, Oilers fans doing it against Talbot. The thing is... Well, in the Kings. The thing is, of course, Talbot was an Oilers goaltender, so feels like maybe they know a little bit better. But, uh, yeah, so Grundstrom then has a net feed this block. The Kings press with nine minutes left. There's a power play for the Oilers. There's an early cycle. Bouchard has a shot this block. There's more cycling. Uh, the Kings clear on the faceoff. They went uh, faceoff win, and then they clear it again. Uh, there's a near miss for McDavid on a beast mode play. Uh, he was playing his best game tonight. Uh, there's a near miss for Henrique as well. The rebounds held that power plays killed off. So Adam Henrique around the net, uh, and he already had a goal in the game. So pretty strong game for him. The shots are 13 to 6 for the Oilers with five minutes left. The Kings press are kept to the outside. There's a near miss for Nugent Hopkins on a two on one rush. 104 left. The Kings get a power play. Uh, Kempe has a chance to block the Oilers clear, and again to end the first period. So it's two nothing Oilers after the first second period. Kings go offside with 16 seconds left in that power play. So they're trying to set it up. They just can't set it up. The Oilers do finish the kill. Skinner holds onto a puck near shortly thereafter. Doughty has a net drive. That's blocked. The Oilers press at three minutes. Uh, Dreisaitl has a sharp angle shot. That saved. Arvidsson had a rush chance that's caught and held. And then Arvidsson fires one wide on a fast break. So Victor Arvidsson all around it tonight. But at four minutes and 50 seconds, Hyman buries one in close from McDavid. Uh, the Talbot chants get a little louder after that one because they're up 3 nothing now. Uh, things are, are pushy on a hold by Talbot after that. We get a power play for the Kings. So the ref sucks. Fans say that the referee sucks. Uh, the Kings cycle. The Oilers block. Fiala has a shot that's held. There's some pushing there. Dano then has a shot that's held. And honestly, I thought Skinner was pretty sharp to that point in the game. Uh, when tested, pretty sharp. The Kings cycle late. That power play is killed off. Fogel's denied. There's more pushing, and the Oilers come out of that with a power play, and they score on it. Uh, Nugent Hopkins taps one in close. Dreisaitl and McDavid with the assist at 8.23. Uh, more chance for Talbot uh, as the Oilers are looking for another. Uh, Campe can't bury a rebound as the Kings get some pressure. Kane then has a two-on-one chance that's held. And then Mikey Anderson at 10.56 puts a point shot past to screen. Uh, Doughty and Arvidsson with the assist. The Kings are on the board. Kings press for another. The shots are 15 to 11 for LA with seven and a half minutes left. So Skinner was under fire a lot in that period. Uh, the Kings score, but it's reviewed to see if it went off Lewis's glove. And yes, so no goal. Um, I know it went off of an oiler after, but it went off his glove. He was the last one to touch it for the Kings. That is no goal. Um, the Oilers press with three and a half minutes left, but it's 1754. Uh, it's a wraparound by Kempe. I think this is Byfield's goal. Last time I looked at the, the app, it still says Kempe's. I think it's going to get changed to Byfield if it hasn't already. Uh, so that'll be Byfield from Kempe. Uh, then with 19.9 seconds left, the Oilers get a power play. So they're up 4-2 to two after the second period. They got a power play to start the third. And at 108 of the third period, they get their three-goal lead back. 
Uh, Dreisaitl wires one from the side of the net. McDavid and Bouchard with the assists. Uh, McDavid and Bouchard had themselves quite the game. Absolutely had quite the game tonight. Uh, the Oilers looked for another. The shots are 2 nothing for Edmonton, three minutes in. Kane has a slot shot that's blocked. Nurse is then denied. Kings press at five minutes, but then Dubois takes a penalty in the offensive zone. You just can't have that. The Oilers cycle. McDavid has a net drive that's defended, and then at 6-17... Hyman tips one in for the hat trick. Uh, McDavid and Bouchard with the assist because McDavid Bouchard, McDavid Bouchard, McDavid Bouchard. Just that's the way it works. Then McDavid on this goal, Bouchard on this goal. Yeah, they, they had pretty good nights. So for Bouchard, that's, uh, that's what, four assists. McDavid had five. That's not bad. So many hats. So many hats that eventually they just went to commercial. They're like, all right, we're, we're just going to go to break. Um, and then I, I agreed with the, the announcer saying, why don't they just get the shovels? Because there were so many hats. There was no way you're going to be able to pick them up. Uh, thousands. There were also a couple of hard hats. I would say that if you have a hard hat and you're in the upper upper bowl, wear it. Don't don't throw it because you're going you're gonna to nail somebody in the lower bowl. And they paid a lot of money for those tickets to not be bleeding. So uh, all kidding aside, uh, they did go to commercial break. They did come back and the hats were, were cleaned up. Uh, the Oilers then press for another because they've had a nice break. Uh, Janmark has a net feed. There's a near miss there. Uh, things get pushy on a hold by Talbot. McDavid with a near miss on a wraparound. There were a lot of Talbot chances as well. Uh, Kings press with eight and a half minutes left. Nurse has a rush chance. That's held. Laferriere is denied as the Kings press. The teams exchange rushes. Uh, Hyman's denied on a fast break. And then Dubois. It's a double deflection. It went off CC's stick and then Nurse's skates. So Nurse goes over and apologizes to Skinner. The assist for Kempe on that one at 1656. And they, the, the, the announcer, or the, the DJ, I should say, in Edmonton hit every sing-along song you can imagine in that third period. <laughs> and they were all, every every stoppage, it was a song you could sing along to. And I was like, so they just have them all backed up into the third. And he's like, I haven't played the sing-alongs yet. i got to play them all. But uh, while, while the fans are enjoying singing and everything, at 1849, the Kings had the net singing. Uh, more scores from Laferriere. It's a cross-ice pass and buried. And, and suddenly, uh, this game's only a two-goal difference. It's 6-4. to four. Uh, The goalie pull happens because the Kings are only down two, but at 19-34, Warren Fogle takes any and all doubt out of the game, which means that I forgot to put the 80s magnet up. I apologize to everybody. Forgot to put the 80s magnet up. Fogel gets that one in 1934, makes the score 7-4, to four, and I realized, oh, that's 11 goals. I forgot to put it up there. So the Oilers lead this series 1-0. Uh, this was a game that it felt like Oilers fans enjoyed quite a bit. Uh, shots on net, 15 apiece for the Oilers. Every period, they got 15 shots. So 15-7 Oilers in the first period, 17-15 LA in the second, 15-13 Oilers in the third. Final shots, 45-37 to 37 for the Oilers. And I, I really think it's because the Oilers had two goals and it pulls the Kings out of their game. This is not the Kings game. If the Kings are going to win this series, you can't have 82 shots in a game. If there's 82 combined shots in a game, the Oilers are going to win it. Unless it's like 81 to 1. But uh, if that happens, that'll be weird. So if the Kings get 81 shots and the Oilers get one, I'm not sure how that happened. Uh, but the power plays, 0 for 2 for LA, 3 for 4 for Edmonton. So that penalty kill for LA is really important. And tonight it just didn't get the job done. The shot, the hits were 67 to 45 for the Kings. So heavy hitting game. Talbot saved 38 out of 44. Uh, despite all the chance and all the goals, I don't think Talbot was necessarily the problem here. The Oilers were just better. Uh, Skinner saves 33 out of 37. And there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you guys so much for watching for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.